All right, so I'm gonna spray some humic because I didn't get to do it when I did the air eight the other day with that other hosen sprayer. I'm gonna get that knocked out. And then we are gonna spend the day talking about fulvic acid. Whoop -a -pana. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know about that last part. Fulvic day. I got some really cool stuff to show you. Without further ado, it's time to roll that intro. What's up, everybody? to do is if I'm only spraying a little bit 16 ounces right I always go ahead and fill that cup back up with water just so it gives me a little more time to pass around and I believe that it helps everything flow through that nozzle better so JP's tip of the day boom <laughs> What is up, everybody? It is a beautiful morning here in Park City. Snow stopped again, but you can see it's cold. Yeah, still really chilly. That's okay. All right, so today is gonna be all about fulvic acid. Now, here's the deal. If you're just landing on this video in my channel for the first time, I'm gonna go ahead and recommend that you click here. Go to the Humic video because there's a lot of info that's gonna go back and forth between these two items because they're related very closely. So do that. Before you get deep into this, it'll help with some of the information that we're talking about today. For those of you that have already seen it, great, welcome. Let's have some fun with this. Okay, so let's kind of go into the basics first and foremost, and that way we can kind of clear some of that stuff off. And then I can show you some cool visual examples of how this works, what the fulvic actually is, what it looks like and what it's really doing. So in the humic production process, if you're doing alkali extraction, you have the opportunity before that to do a fulvic extraction and it's really not necessarily a difficult process, but it changes the yields on your humic production if you're going to try to use that same source material a second time. So your final product will end up different. Now, it's different in a few ways, and we can get into that in a later video, but this is the point that I think is the most important. In the production that we do, we keep everything in one cohesive space, okay? So there is a fulvic fraction that is always part of the humic fraction, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like in just a second. So the first thing to understand is there's a difference between humic acid and fulvic acid, even though they can be extracted from the same place. Now, fulvic acid is able to be extracted under an acidic situation, and it's soluble pretty much across all pH ranges, so it has the ability to kind of be mixed in and moved with any other source material. Uh, or, or fertilizing material you want to put it with. So it has a good stability range across all pHs. Now, humic is not. In order to get the humic out of its initial source material, it has to be brought into a very high pH in order to release those acids out of its initial carbon source material. So part of that is twofold. Number one, fulvic is much lighter material and it's a much smaller molecule. Now, it has some of the same properties as humic does as far as its whole carbon hydrogen polymeric chain that it has all put together. So with fulvic being a much smaller molecule, one of the cool things it can do is actually be absorbed into the leaf tissue along with any other nutrients you might put with it that you're trying to get foliar absorption, which is great. So it can get into those phytoregulatory pathways and actually get into the plant and cause kind of an immediate plant response, which is pretty cool. So another thing you're gonna get that's pretty awesome is that you've got, a, again, smaller molecule, which means a couple of things. In the soil, as fulvic gets down into the soil, 
you have a much higher CEC on that particular material, anywhere between 520 and 1100, which is super, super huge because it's so tiny. Why is that important? Because that can actually grab on to any of these other cations that might be sliding through the soil solution if it doesn't attach to soil particles. This gives another potential point to have nutrients latch on and not be washed away. So there's three things that I get asked about pretty regularly as far as fulvic and what we do or how I see its role and, and all of that kind of stuff. So number one, uh, I do get asked why we don't produce a fulvic acid standalone product. And you know maybe that's something that we will do in the future, but part of the process and the way that I do things is I like to leave material all together. So that fulvic fraction is staying in the humic solution when we create it so that it's always part of it. The second thing is, is the RGS product different than it used to be? It's not. There are certain states that wouldn't allow us to keep fulvic on the label in combination with humic, and so it was easier for us to just take it off the label and have that product approved across all 50 states rather than have individual for every state. Now, again, that is an option that we just took as a company, but that fulvic fraction is still part of the RGS material just so you guys know. The third one is, if fulvic is part of your formulations, does it actually detach and does it become usable in the soil? So that's what I'm gonna show you right now. If you watch the beginning part of the video, you can see how I took humic, that was just straight humic 12, and I was dripping it down into water to get that really cool solution swirling effect to sort of show what it does. Now, I accidentally cracked that wine glass, so that sucked. So I got a different one uh, and ended up putting it into a a different mug here. So this actually has been sitting um, in just a neutral water position for three days now and the humic has not really settled down. I mean it, it's still in solution which is pretty cool. So that's just in a, a neutral which actually when you add the humic 12 to it it jacks up that pH so this is I didn't find my pH meter, I apologize. It's somewhere in my crawl space. I don't know where that thing is. Anyway, it should be sitting around like a nine and a half in that solution. So then I did something a little bit different and I'm gonna show you how this stuff looks. So Humic 12 as well. Now you can see that there's a, a dropout here on the bottom here. So what I ended up doing in order to get a separation of the fulvic, which is what I'm gonna pull out of here in just a second, was I put it into sort of a weak, about a 2% citric acid in water solution in order to make it fall out really, really quickly just for the purposes of this video. So as you have a more acid substance added to the humic, you will get the insoluble portion to drop and the fulvic will release into the top. Let's go like this, see if we can draw any of that up. And it's doing something, there we go. Okay, I've almost got all the solubles separated in here. Let's see if I can get the rest of it out. And I will show you, sorry, get this up so you guys can see it. This now, we have pulled off into a fulvic solution. Lighter in color, lighter portion, dropped the humic out so that it's now all in the bottom of this material. So that acid caused the humic to really fall and release the other material up into it. So what's cool about this is in certain pH ranges or if you're combining it with any other acidic materials, this is the effect that you're gonna get. You're gonna have a separation of the fulvic and the humic. So if you think about a low pH clay soil, you will see a faster separation between the humic portion and the fulvic portion because the fulvic will stay to the lighter side as it hits a more acidic soil. So that's cool. I'm gonna dump this out, wash this, and pour this fulvic extract right back into it. Oh, I'm back, sorry. I don't have my irrigation on up here to turn on my hose up on the top side of the property yet, so. Exercise. So this is what we extracted off the top here. We'll get a better look at it. You can see the color, how much lighter that material is than humic. There we go. So that was pulling a fulvic out of the humic 12 and that's what you're gonna get. Now this hasn't been filtered or anything else like that, 
So you can see how that would separate out, change, and basically give you something different to play with. So if we take a look at the molecules of fulvic and humic and compare the two together, you see some striking similarities as far as the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, but you'll notice that the polymeric compound of the humic is much bigger. That's what gives it more weight, which is why that one is going to sit into the soil and do its work down there, while the fulvic is going to go and have a direct plant response. So I guess the beauty of all of this is this. It's already in there, folks. It's already done. It's not something else that you need to add into your program to get a great benefit out of. And if you're feeling scientific and you wanna play and you wanna mess around with things, you can do it off of the humic and pull some fulvic out of it yourself and go apply that. Go mix it into a sprayer and use it and you could have fun with that if you want. You know, that's a, an extra thing and I don't know if everybody likes playing science in their garage all the time, but I have a good time with it. So anyway, that's really just the high points of the fulvic portion. Wanted to show you guys how it's there and it's available and it's in the next products and you can use it and know that you're getting the benefit out of that material all the time without having to add it. It's pretty cool. And really what it's ultimately going to do between getting a soil interface with humic and a more plant interface with fulvic. So I don't really know what else I have to talk about. Wanted to keep it short and sweet, have a little fun, get out in the sun. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.